Yeah. Certainly the voters there hope so. Mm -hmm. There's another round in three weeks. We'll see if he actually wins, but he would be the most free market candidate that we've seen in Brazil for a long time. Not him particularly, but he's picked a, a, a finance minister, he says, who has studied at the University of Chicago, very, very pro free markets, and it would be a dramatic change for Brazil. He would privatize nearly everything that's controlled by the government, and that's a lot. Wow. That's, uh, and he would cut taxes, and he would cut corporate taxes. I mean, he's saying a lot of things that investors would like, which is why you see Brazil rallying compared to all the other emerging markets, which have been falling because of rising U.S. interest rates. Catherine, it feels like we've we've yeah. lived through this before. The great hopes of reform, yeah. we see the surge in the markets, <laughs> and then it's disappointing at the end. Is there a trade here in your view? Look, Michelle's right, and Brazil troughed in the middle of September, and we said, go long, go long. This is, this is a great story in the sense that anything is better than what we had. Right? Anything is better than what we had. Michelle's right. Um, Bolsonaro is probably a shoe in We have the second round coming up. And I would add to her list of, of what he plans to do, and that is cutting the public sector in half. So we're seeing a lot of uh, upside in terms of market sentiment with regard to Brazil and broader emerging markets. Catherine, I mean, Brazil moving up 9% in a week, that's a pretty big move. I understand this candidate could mean lots of change, but is that too far too fast? Is that appropriate? Are you uh, further bullish from here? Look, if you look at the uh, Brazil uh, ETF, um, you can see that we still have further to run. So there was a disproportionate selling, I'd say, Courtney, over the past year when emerging markets fell out of favor completely. My contention, however, is that in 2019, we're going to see a, uh, an, uh, an outperformance versus developed markets. So I'm actively recommending um, our clients to accumulate positions in emerging markets in this fourth quarter of 2018. You can't get, Michelle, very much farther from Lula, right? No. <laughs> I mean, and, and this has happened in a quick period of time, yes. basically a pendulum swing. Nobody thought yeah. this guy had a chance a few months but, ago. No, right? yeah. no. But to Catherine's point, if, if he follows through and he cuts the public sector by half, that cuts a lot of jobs, too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but the population there is incredibly frustrated because the economy, mm -hmm. despite all the government intervention, has not been good. They lived through the worst recession in decades. Crime is horrific. The public sector mm -hmm. is huge. But it does not work. Mm -hmm. Remember the massive protests, right. people in the streets, because the buses couldn't get people to work. I mean, government is big, and yet govern does, government doesn't do much for the people there. So that's why right. you're seeing this reaction. Can we pivot that's to exactly China? Right. Oh, go ahead, Catherine. Well, I was just going to say there's such a big carry, too. So I think that finally, finally, emerging markets have gotten cheap enough for institutional guys to stick their toes in. So I think that's what's happening now. You're seeing flows finally return to the emerging markets in the equity space and in fixed income. Last week, EPFR flows showed exactly that. And I think that that valuation has gotten to the point where that price is justified. And I think guys are going to start to pile into emerging markets going into next year.